a midlife crisis or a midlife transition. The truth is every single one of us goes through challenges and upheavals at this time of our life. You're not alone and it is natural to question where you're at and where you want to be. However, we are in control of how we frame this transitional time. Are we going to let ourselves slide into decline or are we going to use it as an opportunity to redefine our identity and embrace this second act with joy? Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Midlife Mentors with me, James. And me, Claire. James has just made the loveliest decaf coffee. Oh, this is my top tip for winter, right? Yes, listen to this. It's really good. Decaf, decaf <laughs> black coffee. Building and it up. And then you uh, put it in a shaker with some chocolate protein powder, dash of cocoa. And you get a mocha. Shake it all up. Be careful because the way it seems to react with the hot water to make a gas so it can explode. <laughs> Keep the lid on firmly. Yeah. You get a lovely uh, protein mocha out the can, end of it. Can you tell that's happened? To... James is hilarious, by the way. He is just, he's like a bill in a china shop. I love, I do love that phrase. Mum always used to say that to my brother. I was creative, never... creative people no, are often but, full of energy and exuberance. But the food goes everywhere. His morning power shake goes everywhere constantly. And I just hear, oh. Oh, oh no, oh no, Constant. that's what I always hear, just James dropping things and throwing things everywhere. But yes, it's a very nice mocha. Very nice mocha. It's on lovely. A, a wet and windy and dark day here in the UK. It's, London is not nice But today. by the time you're listening to this, we'll be in... Ibiza! Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> we are moving to Ibiza for, I don't think we've announced that. We haven't announced it. We are moving We're to... Actually, this is exclusive. Well actually, I did send it out on, a, on an email. If you're on our email list and you haven't opened that email yet, then you won't know this. But we are moving to Ibiza as of Saturday. This Saturday coming. We are. We're doing a different route. You know, normally, because of um, Lola, our little fur baby, we have to do... We take the car, we drive, we get a boat. It takes days and days. We're going to try something different this time. Mm. We're getting a, a mm. pet taxi through the Channel Tunnel, mm. a train to Paris, I'm and then dubious. we're going to fly from Paris to Ibiza with Lola. Uh, Lola in the cabin, of course. We wouldn't put her in the hold, so she comes in the cabin with us. Yes. She is small enough. Well, I, I say she's small enough. They, it's up to eight kilos, isn't it? Uh, ten kilos. Oh, ten kilos. So she's about, about seven and a half. But I'm dubious because I can't take more than one suitcase for three months. You'll be fine, Claire. It's three an exercise months. in minimalist living. Which we could all do with from time to time. I know, but I am I am struggling with that mentally right now. But we're very, very excited to be we, moving we there are. for three months. We're going to be living in the old town, which is super cool. It's amazing. So the next one will come from there. Today we're going to be talking about the midlife crisis. Midlife well, crisis or midlife transition, yes. we're calling it. So we're going to dive into that. Because basically we want to... We know it can be a really tricky time for people. Um, and we just want to share some of the common themes that occur. And let you know you're, you're not alone. And there are things you can be doing, places you can reach out to for help. So that's what we're going to be covering in this episode. But this kind of came off the back of last week. I was very kindly asked, I got an email, and I was kindly asked to go on GB News to talk about Cindy Crawford has hired a midlife coach. So that was the kind of topic of conversation. That's what they wanted me to go in there and talk about was midlife coaching. And the most common things that we see as midlife coaches, people coming to us, the challenges, the you know, what, what's going on for them, the stuff that they're really, really struggling with. So I went on and talked about that. I would just like to say at this point, if you are a supermodel and you're listening to this and you need a midlife coach, <laughs> you are a baby. I um, mean, because I have you. No, I know, I know. So, yes, that was the, the reason we kind of thought that we would do this podcast topic today was because it's, it's such a passion of ours and... When I was on GB News, I was feeling really so, so, so passionate about it. And, you know, we were, I was asked those questions about what are the main challenges, what would be the main tips. And I just thought, actually, it's really important to share this all with you. Because as James just said, 
all of us, all of us go through a midlife transition. We'd prefer to call it a midlife mm. transition, but it's been commonly known as a midlife crisis. And there's still a lot of shame and stigma and embarrassment about people going through these changes at midlife. And, you know, it's great that people are now starting to talk about it, but we're all in the same boat. We are. I mean, I think I'd describe it as like a transition of identity and self-confidence. Mm. And of course, for some people, that might be very slight. Other people, it might be quite extreme. Because midlife, I think, naturally, is a, is a point we get to where we reflect on what's been and we look ahead. Uh, and we probably can't help making comparisons um, and that can trigger, I think that's why it's been, the mid, term midlife crisis is actually um, coined by a, a psychoanalyst. Um, I think he gave a talk in 57 when he was 40 and then actually wrote a paper in the 60s. Um, and he admitted later, I think, that he was actually feeling <laughs> depressed himself at this point in life. <laughs> he talks about, you know, um, looking looking ahead down the road and inevitable decline and stuff. But he, I think he did change his position later. But it's a natural point in life, I think, where... At some point between 40 and 60, we're going to evaluate kind of where we are, what our life has meant so far, um, what our values are and where we're going. Um, But that's, I think we need to get a transition because it's also an amazing, empowering opportunity to take charge and go, okay, well, this is now what I want to achieve and start making steps in that direction. Yeah, and I think so many of us spend all of those years we're we're taught this from school right we spend all of those years striving stressing about what society tells us we should have and to a degree you know we want these things too but and they're they're valid things like your career the the marriage the house the children the stuff the cars the holidays this whole structure in society that we are told is you know, perfection or the thing that we're going for and the goal that we're going for. And especially our careers and finances and all of that sort of stuff. We gather all of these things around us and we create this personality structure and identity for ourselves. But, you know, James and I have the privilege of speaking to midlifers day in, day out. And the common thing is I've lost my self-identity. I don't know who I am, what I want, what I like I don't even know what I think most of the time because I'm so busy running around after everyone and putting everyone everything else above myself I don't even have the headspace to really ask myself who I am and what I want and whether this is the trajectory of my life that fulfills me so most of us just end up feeling incredibly stuck incredibly lost very depressed and anxious you know we've got some stats actually um and James will talk to you about some of the stuff around midlife men, which is actually mm. really shocking. But, you know, we, we all get to that stage, but it's really important. We're going to give you some tips at the end, but having that support, understanding what's going on, because it's not just psychological, it's physiological as, as well. There is yeah. hormonal changes that are going on with your body that are making you feel this way. I, I think it's really important to wrap this up because I think it can be, it's been oversimplified in the past as, as kind of looking at it as just purely a psychological issue, right? It's not but, at all. Um, actually, you know, we hit this phase in life as Claire said there, our hormones are changing. They're, they are going to affect our mood. They actually affect our psychology as well, you know? Mm. So, so that's going on. Of course, our bodies are changing and that can be upsetting for some of us, you know, mm. if we feel like, um, you know, we're, we're losing our strength, we're putting on weight that we don't want, we've got less energy, all these things that can then in turn play into the psychology as well. You can easily get into a downward spiral. Totally accept that. But the thing is, I think we need to reframe this of like, you know, rather than looking at what's lost, if that's the right term, looking at what's to gain now. Because it's easy to sit there. It's like, I think you get to this point and go, okay, this is where I am in my life. Here's the thing. Here's the reality check. You You can't change what has been, right? But you have the choice now whether... You're just going to be a passenger and let circumstances drive you for the rest of it or whether you're going to actually get in that driving seat and take control of your life now because you have the power to do that completely. Mm. And like I said, everyone's been putting... You, we've By the time we get to this stage in our life, we have put so much emphasis on everyone else and external things and we all reach that point where we, where we think, am I fulfilled? Like, is this... Is this the legacy? What what legacy do I want to leave in the second act of my life? You know, this is an opportunity in the second act of your life to redefine yourself, reinvent yourself. And that's kind of like a, a, a 
a tugging feeling. And I know that sounds weird, but it's it's a tugging feeling of, I suppose, your spiritual side, that, that soulful side of yourself. You know, is there something inside of me that needs to be expressed? Is there something inside of me, that, like that song that needs to be sung? And then you have a stark contrast looking at your life now and think, actually... This doesn't make me happy anymore. It could be the thing that you're doing. It could even be the relationship that you are in. You know, we know that divorce rates in midlife are, are going up. And obviously, relation, people change, relationships change. And it can be an incredibly unsettling time. So like James just said as well, around the hormones, you've got that as a double whammy. Your body's changing. You're not sleeping as well, potentially. Um, you've got brain fog. You really don't recognise that body that you've existed in for such a long time. And so this culminates in what we have termed as that midlife crisis. But there is so much wisdom that you have within you. Mm. There is so much strength and you've been, you've been through so much. By the time we get to this point in our life, you've been through so much. And you have so much wisdom within you. And I know it can be scary to ask yourself what's next. But... Like James said, we do have that opportunity to start redefining and reinventing ourselves. Yeah, and I do think there's a big uh, socio-cultural element here, right? Because we only have to go back a couple of generations to probably to our grandparents, you know, and, and work life finished in, in their 60s, and they probably weren't around for much longer after that, right? So, you know, if we're saying midlife is kind of 40 to 60, actually that was three quarters life. But if you go back even like another 100 years... An old man or someone who was 60, people were dying in their, in their 40s and 50s pretty regularly. So, you know, um, are we still are probably like adjusting yes. as a species to that, thinking, well, yeah, we hit 40 or we hit 50, a landmark. I'm 50 uh, in a couple yes, of weeks, actually. Yes, yes. Um, feel free to send presents. Um, <laughs> and looking gorgeous for <laughs> oh, it. Oh, thank you. But, you know, uh, if two, 100 years ago, if you made it to 50, you'd be like, wow, you know, I really am pretty, pretty near the end of the road here. Go back, you know, a couple of generations. You're like, oh, I've got a little bit of time left. Yeah, we've there's still loads of time left. You've probably got another like 30 good years mm. if you look after yourself, and you can make a massive impact in the world, and you can live an amazing life. So, you've got to just adjust your thinking to like midlife rather than thinking as as the beginning and the end. I'd say think of it as the beginning of a new chapter and where I'm, you can achieve a lot. And without sounding woo woo here, you know, it's the, the world kind of needs us to be inspiring, to step into that version of ourselves. Because also, we were just talking about this podcast before we came on, and we were saying the world is so uncertain now. There is such a a high degree of uncertainty. Again, this is playing a massive role in how we're feeling. And that uncertainty can make us feel really inert and really stuck. But actually, what we want to be able to do is leave legacies for our children the next generation show the next generation because they're growing into a, they're growing up in a world that is vastly different to ours and will continue to be vastly different to ours and actually what do we what version of ourselves do we want to show up as so that we inspire the next generation that we inspire our children you know show them what is possible from within you and I was having this conversation with a lovely lady that I coach one to one yesterday you know it's it's almost like our duty to become the fullest versions of ourselves and and feel the fear and do it anyway and really really use what you've gained over the last 40 50 years and really put it to some use yeah i look at that you know you, you've got you've got a, a long good road ahead of you i think it's a message we're trying to give but um you're going to have to start using some tools to make sure that you make the most from that road and you enjoy it. Yeah. And, and those, you know, thanks to modern technology, modern science, you know, those tools are available to you now. I don't know where you just want to give some stats around, because this this is... Yeah, so I'm, I'm really flying the flag for men. I'm very mm. fortunate. Um, it's Men's Health Month this month in the, here in, in the UK. I don't know if that's a global thing. I think it's a global thing, actually. Um, and I'm very fortunate I'm going into a big city institution to deliver a series of talks around around men's health basically to highlight some of the issues around so it so beautiful talk about doing. the andropause uh, i'm doing stuff on, on relationships and the role of communication as well and that's going out to a, a global audience um within their organization so that that's amazing but i really want to fly the flag there. so i'm actually um, working on a book at the moment about why we need to talk about the andropause or we Woo-hoo. need to talk about the andropause it's so so important you know the, the stats are horrific um we know that men don't aren't as good at maintaining social networks as women uh and that only gets worse as they get older they're also less 
um, good at seeking help from health professionals. They'll tend to like bottle it all up. And the stats are really quite horrific. Um, in the UK, men are three times more likely to take their own lives than women. And when they get to the ages of 45 to 49, it's nearly four times more likely. It's, it's, the, it's the, highest, the highest suicide cohort group, I think, in most Western societies is middle-aged men. Mm. Uh, and, you know, similarly for women, one in five women aged 40 to 59, one in four over 60, are on antidepressants in the last 30 days in the US. Now, the rate for women having on antidepressants is a lot higher, but it's thought this is because they're more open about going to their doctors and talking about it, whereas men are bottling up. I think there's a stat that said... I found in the UK, 77% of men have felt depressed or anxious in the last year, um, which is which is enormous. But the message I want to give to the men out there is like, you know, to start opening up and talking about this stuff, right? Let's not be afraid of showing our vulnerability and talking about how we're feeling uh, and talking to buddies, uh, professionals, our partners about where we might need support and help with this. Yeah. Cause, um, um, there's a great life out there for you. Um, just go out and, and get it. But it starts with opening up and talking about how you're feeling. Yeah, and you know, just these these this increase in the amount of people that are taking antidepressants. And here's the thing, I, I will say this a million times over, I'm not anti-antidepressants, not at all. Ten years ago, I was putting them myself. I was lucky enough to be able to take myself off them within six months, mainly through nutrition, eating better, looking after myself better, and moving and doing all the psychological kind of um, growth, the self-development and personal growth that I did and meditation and breath work and all of this sort of stuff. But I'm not anti-antidepressants, but it just goes to show you the kinds, the, demo, the demographic for us midlife people that more and more of us are taking antidepressants now. There's a huge suicide rate in men. So it's really important not to to feel embarrassed and a lot of shame around the midlife crisis or the midlife transition because, you know, there's, there still is, there is a lot of guilt. I've noticed there's a lot of guilt from the people that we work with and the people that we come into contact with that, oh my goodness, I have worked so hard for all of this. These are all the things I wanted I desired them. I sacrificed for them. I had them. I've got the relationship. You know, I should be happy. I should have. Should should should. I should be, but I'm not, and I don't know what's going on here. And actually, just by we're going to go into some tips, but mm. just by understanding what's going on with you physiologically, hormonally, how you can start improving your physical, mental, and emotional health through the tips that we. I mean, this is what we do day in, day out with clients. This is what the midlife method is based on. It's not just to help you feel, you know, healthier and happier at midlife. It's to help you navigate this midlife transition as well. So, you know, it's really, really important that you get the right support, that you're doing the right things so that you understand you aren't alone, that you absolutely have the right to question what your what meaning your life has where you want to take it because at the end of the day it is your life you don't this is not a dress rehearsal you get one life so it's really really important that you don't slam this down that you don't tell yourself oh no you're being stupid you're being selfish and all these sorts of things because you are not the world needs more people that are lit up with the things that they love yeah, I mean, I just want to say a quick word here about antidepressants. They they have their role, and obviously, if you are if you are depressed, you know, they play a, a role there. But I think we've got to a stage now where the medical profession is just seeing it as a solution to a range of ailments. Yes. So I must speak uh, probably two two people a day in midlife that have have symptoms. We'd explain them like, oh, I'm low on energy. I occasionally feel a bit. And they go to the doctor, and it's immediately here's antidepressants. So I heard a stat the other day. I don't know if it's true or not. That said uh, with Gen Z in the US. 50% of them are now on antidepressants, which is, shocking. Which is the young generation. Uh, the thing is, right, if you're a midlifer, uh, can you expect to have like some of these symptoms? Absolutely you can, but check in with yourself. You know, Are you actually depressed or are, are there other hormonal factors going on, other psychological factors that you can overcome with other treatments and other Abs- lifestyle tweaks? Absolutely. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying don't get antidepressants, but, but just check in with yourself first. And if your doctor's first response is to give you just offer antidepressants straight away maybe just take and go like, i don't want to do that route yet what else can we explore mm. what else could be going on here well it's like the magic pill isn't it we're constantly trying to cure something rather than prevent it in the first place yeah. and that's the same with antidepressants it's to say i'm going to be really blunt in bold here it is the same with hrt as well you know what we don't want 
in society is people just using HRT when they hit menopause without having, we are so passionate about this, without having an understanding of all the other lifestyle modifications they can dial in that will make it better. Absolutely go on HRT and do those other things, but do not just go on HRT without having your gut health dialed in, without having the movement side dialed in, without having your mindset and emotional and stress level stuff dialed in. In. Um, it's not we've been a culture now where it's just pills, 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 and that's completely not what we are about. No. So, so listen, some... if you're going through a midlife transition moment, if you're feeling this, if this is resonating with you, what I want you to do first of all is know that you're not alone in this, right? Mm. There's many, many people are feeling this way, doing this way. Second thing I want you to do is not see this as an obstacle, see it as an opportunity. Go, okay, well, here I am. I get to define the rest of my life on my terms. So what do I want from that? And it's going to start by taking some small steps. So we're going to share some tips with you now. So the first one is, you know, kind of accept where you're at, decide what you want, and then start small. Start with small changes. Don't try and do too much at once or make, like, massive changes in your life. Just start taking small steps. So I tell you, the secret to success is small, consistent steps taken time over time. Consistency and persistency. Yeah, and I would say on this, don't freak out if you don't know what you want. So again, I coach lots of women around this. I don't know what I want. That's okay. Just ask yourself, what do I enjoy? Mm -hmm. Can I remember what I enjoyed? What did I used to enjoy before life got in the way? What brings me little bursts of bliss? What When I connect with something that makes me happy, to actually start becoming aware of in your everyday life or something you see or something you do or a memory that comes to you that gives you that sense of, oh my goodness, That brings me bliss. And then just follow that your bliss. Just follow those little nuggets, but don't get too hung up on the fact and stressy that you don't know what you want to do with your life. It will come as long as you open up and start asking yourself the right questions. If you open yourself up to that kind of universal energy of, I would like to know what the next step for myself is, then you will start getting little nuggets and memories will come to you about what you used to love doing when you were even a child. What, What made you happy? So I just wanted to say that mm. because sometimes we can get a bit overwhelmed with what's my purpose, what's my purpose? And a lot of people don't know because for so long they haven't understood that. So don't don't overthink it. Absolutely, yeah. Like Claire said, start start with a hobby, start with a small goal, start with just you know getting yourself back in shape. That can often help, right? Just, just like Abs- feeling back into your body again and getting that mind-body connection going. Absolutely, I love that one. Absolutely. Don't overthink it, just do little steps and actually that, that take you outside your comfort zone and then you're going to open up your mind to other things about what that purpose is and where you're trying to take your life, what your legacy exactly. is. Um, another one is connect with other people who inspire you. Mm. So we've said over and over again, you are not on your own own here and it's really important that we open up to the right people the right tribe have like-minded people on our side that inspire us to to look at ourselves in a safe way to have self-awareness and to ask us those questions that are going to start propelling us forward it's really really important that we have those people around us that help us level up in our life we have a ton of people like that in our life and it's honestly one of the only reasons we are where we are constantly moving ourselves forward constantly looking at how we can improve ourselves and the lives of other people and that's because we've got amazing people around us so get that accountability get those that yeah. community you know you are are the some of the people you hang around with so if you want more from life find other people that want more from life yeah and, and are showing up yeah. are showing up themselves um, educate yourself on your hormones, right? So so do understand what's going on inside your body so you're more aware of what's what's happening and how that's affecting you physically, how effect that's affecting you psychologically, how that's affecting your mood. Just just learn that stuff because when you're awareness, you can go, ah, oh, right, it, it brings understanding and brings compassion. Um, manage your stress levels as well. Try, try to find some... T- I mean, again, this is all the stuff that we teach. Use stress management tools and techniques to bring that stress level down because again when you are at that heightened level of stress you can't think straight you are in brain fog let alone what's going on with your um, hormones so just understanding that the the more you can bring down your stress levels the less you are going to feel like you're in a rut the less you're going to feel like you're stuck just manage those stress levels because they impact so many areas of your life Mm. I'd say make sure you've got um, a routine in your life that's supporting you, right? Because we want to have a perception of control. It's a crazy, crazy world out there. And we can often just let 
life pull us along. This is what I was saying. Like, have a choice. Do you want to be a passenger in life or do you want to be driving the car? Start driving the car. And the way you do that is start creating routines for yourself to give yourself this perception of control over what's happening yeah and this kind of leads nicely on to we've already said about having a hobby so that's another thing that we can do but that leads nicely on to the whole health side of things banging on about this all the time of course we are because this is the background we come from but if you are it also goes in line with that routine and that schedule get a routine of looking after yourself, prioritizing your health, mm-hmm. you are going to feel so much more in control of the trajectory of your life once you start scheduling little times for yourself to go and look after yourself and give yourself that level of self-respect. You'll start believing in yourself more, you'll start learning more about yourself and opening yourself up to more possibilities just from looking after yourself in the health perspective. And finally, I'll say, like we've talked about reaching out, but also like, get yourselves into a community of like-minded people, people who are going to lift you up, mm. inspire you. Um, you can do that in real life. You can do it online. We have our free community, the Midlife Mentors community yeah. um, on Facebook. Um, we run um, free trainings in there all the time. There's loads of resources in there. So if you haven't joined that, do join that. But um, yeah, there's lots of other places you can go to be part of a community of people looking forward and looking up. Yeah, because we can feel very isolated, right? So this is it. Isolation is an absolute, you know, it's a killer. This is why the lockdowns were so, so bad for our mental health and our physical health, right? So try and get yourself out there. And, you know, obviously we do feel that sense of loneliness a lot of the time, even even if we've got lots of people around us. Again, this is another thing at midlife. We can feel very lonely, even though our life is so crazy and busy. So just make sure that you are connecting with the right people. Mm. And that... I think is it. Is it. I We're hope that kinda, helps. Yeah, it's something that we see a lot, as we've mm. said. It's something that we feel super, super passionate about. We want as many midlifers to reach their potential. We want as many midlifers to live extraordinary lives. It's And it's about making sure that we are reframing the midlife crisis into a midlife transition that is full of opportunity. And that is powerfully where we want to take as many people as possible because you might be looking at other people going, oh my goodness, they're just the lucky ones. There's, no, we have worked with hundreds of midlifers now who come to us with these exact challenges, with these exact problems, and they come out of our program a complete, with a completely renewed sense of purpose, passion, health, wellness, mentality. It's, it's all possible for you, and that's why we will never stop shining that light so that you can follow it. It's the proven path based on science, that you can follow. So if that sounds good to you, by the way, do reach out to us. Um, we are at the email. Team at the midlifementors.com. And we have cohorts every month at the Midlife Method. We take lots of amazing people through it. You'll be part of just a wonderful, uplifting group of people, as well as dialing in everything that we're talking about, mind, body, and soul. Well, also, if you're listening to this uh, live, as it were, when it comes out, then this week we're going to be renouncing and releasing... Oh, my goodness, yes. ...an awesome 21-day experience, which is kind of like going to take you up to Christmas. And this is about basically changing your beliefs, your habits to, to enable you to have the success you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say too much more about it, but um, if you haven't signed up to our mailing list, sign up to our mailing list. It's going to be coming out there. It's going to be on our socials. This is, um, we're running it once. We're running it live. live. Uh, if you want to change your life and like sprint into 2023 feeling amazing and knowing that you've got your goals nailed because you have the tools to achieve them, this is going to this, be for you. This, this is this is epic. It's honestly, it's going to be immense, absolutely immense. Anyway, we're sending you lots of love. Take care. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.